Fabulous. So I'm going to talk about law, policy and regulation today. And normally law is usually an afterthought in a lot of things. And there, there's a variety of reasons for this. And one of the first reasons, sorry, is that the pace at which law develops is completely different from the pace at which technologies or enterprise works. And I'm, I'm quite pleased that the previous um, speakers today have touched on finance, have touched on technology, have touched on innovation, and I've simply spoken about um, some of the difficulties that are faced in trying to accelerate um, renewable energy. I currently am based at the University of Oxford. My background is law, I, was a practitioner. I am a practitioner and a consultant as well. But I'm currently at the university looking at ways in which law, policy, and regulation can enhance, rather than be a barrier, can be a facilitator of integrating renewable energy technologies in the race to net zero. One of the most important things about this conversation in light of where we are having it is context. And this picture, I did not take it. It was taken very near where my mom comes from. And some of the realities, you know, when we talk about nuclear power and we try and correlate that with some of the present realities that people face in this part of the world, some of these things seem so far removed from, from reality. And one of the most important things about establishing systemic change is taking into account the context in which we operate. And so I will not go too much into detail, but you can see these are people who have no access to the grid, who do not have more, you know, the trappings of modern infrastructure, but are trying you know, to, to have solar power, at least to ensure that they have lighting, which there are gendered impacts of this has helped a lot of young girls and women avoid certain um, diseases and remain in school. Now, what's the role of law in all of this and what's the point in energy systems? I think the first description of energy was recorded by Aristotle very, very early on. I think Aristotle existed somewhere to the order of about 200, 200 BC. But the whole point is, whether you're looking at traditional forms of energy or we are looking at renewable sources of energy, there's a value chain. And at each of these stages, there are legal policy and regulatory problems. But what is the aim of all this when we talk about renewable energy? The whole point is we need sustainable development. A lot of the trappings of modern life are powered by energy. And goal seven is basically renewable energy. So it's sustainable, clean, and affordable energy for all. So how then? do we bring law into this conversation to facilitate this? First, when we speak of energy projects, we must think at multiple scales. Um, when we talk about net zero and global carbon emissions and so on, these are overarching aims. But at each level, there are different tiers of law, policy, and regulation and governance that we need to take into account. Working backwards from the top, a lot, and what we're speaking about here are probably international frameworks. And what's there is what on your, is on your screen. And there isn't a uniform international convention that governs energy in general. So we don't have, and I think what it's important for me to pause just for a moment and say, look, law requires sources. And so the source of the law determines its strength and how it can be applied, or its absence can determine what one can and cannot do. And so law is usually a political product. It is usually, it emanates from government. We do not have a uniform international government. And so it's quite important to see how all these overarching global aims can be put into practice so that they have an impact on people whose reality is that. And so when we think of energy projects, if we think of centralized um, grid systems, whether you're thinking of high power lines, We've heard mention of like the Turkana project. We are talking about centralized systems, but there are decentralized systems. And if you're looking at an off-grid solution, you will encounter localized problems, land use, community problems, um, local bylaws, user of land and so on. And so I think whenever we speak about all these things, um, when it comes to renewable energy, it's fundamentally important to centralize the discussion on law. And why does law matter? And this is essentially my second last slide. So I think I have just about a minute. Law determines the energy mix. If you look at the left and right hand side of your screen, by 2040, oil, gas, and coal will still have a huge part of our energy mix unless we do 
something fairly radical from a legal policy and regulatory perspective. So these statistics were taken from the International Energy Agency um, about two, two years ago. And so based on the current policies, if we just draw a map or a graph, this is exactly what's going to happen. We know and we've heard that um, renewable sources now, there's price parity. In fact, some of them are cheaper than fossil fuels. And so one of the questions that maybe we need to talk about is should law policy and regulation actively actively incentivize the shift from um, the energy transition from a fossil fuel based economy to a low carbon economy. I say yes, some people find that quite contentious, but I think law matters for this reason. And so um, there are different stakeholders. This is not going to be possible without involving the stakeholders. You can see some of them on your screen. And I think it's fundamentally important to have everybody involved in building energy systems of the future. And this picture was taken in COP and someone, um, Greenpeace actually put that little sign at the bottom and said, our planet is not for sale. And so everybody, um, someone else put it rather subtly. He said, it doesn't matter where you're from, whether it's a developed or developing country, we're all under the same sun. And therefore that's why we must all collectively um, make efforts to ensure that we have a clean energy future. In conclusion, the energy cycle and holistic views of energy systems are needed, but one also needs to see the local contexts. We have global energy challenges. We need to include more actors, but above all, here is one question at the bottom. It's easy to talk about all these things, but as Willis had mentioned in his presentation, there are several complexities. So what would you prioritize had you been the leader of your country? Had you the power to do certain things to ensure that the energy transition is accelerated? What would you do? And if you ask that question, you discover that it's much harder than we think it is. Thank you very much for your time. I'll stop sharing my screen and hand back over to Willis.